All right. Uno's been around for decades now, but even with so many years of experience and so many veterans to this card game, a lot of people haven't figured out how to master it yet, except for me. Yeah, I'm the only one. I uploaded an Uno video recently that received a lot of positive reception, but it also received a little bit of negative reception. And that little bit of negative reception included me. I didn't think that the video was that good. It only covered a basic Uno strategy, but today, I'm gonna be going over advanced Uno tactics. The first pillar of Uno is the strats. Strategies in Uno are based off what I mentioned in my last video. And that, that was pretty much the entire video there, but I'll sum it up here in case you didn't watch it. In Uno, you want to hold your action cards, like your skips, your plus twos, your plus fours, until late in the game, and you want to get rid of your number cards early. If you get rid of your action cards um, earlier on in the game, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage, because really what you're doing is you're giving up a lot of power to other people and giving them chances at coming back, because then if you like plus four someone, they can draw four cards that could be all plus fours. Meanwhile, you're getting rid of a plus four, so really, you're putting yourself at a bit of a disadvantage. But that's the main strategy you'll be carrying on throughout the majority of the game. There really isn't any clear-cut strategy other than that. I'll get into more stuff later. Alright, now we're going to talk about math. Statistics, or stats, is the second pillar of UNO, and it's a major part of the game because most of UNO is just luck. Basically, numbers hold a lot of power in this game, and if you can control that the best that you can, you can reign a lot of power over other people. Um, an example I can give you is this. If I place down a red 2 onto the table, it actually tells a lot about my hand to other people, especially if I'm using the strategy that I mentioned earlier. That strategy holds that I have to get rid of my highest numbered cards first. And if you don't know why I have to get rid of my highest numbered cards first, here's why, real quick. If you play Uno in a marathon setting, or if you play online with coins, you'll lose harder if you're caught with higher numbered cards at the end of the round. That's basically why. And then a lot of other people, when they're just playing with their friends, just do it out of OCD or habit. So... So if someone places down a red 2, you can assume that the 2 was their highest red card, and that the only red cards that they could possibly have left is a 0 or a 1. And you can also use this against people, which brings me to my next section. Traps is the third pillar of Uno, and it is the greatest part of Uno. Going off everything we've been told, I'm going to show you why traps are the most powerful thing in Uno. We already mentioned that you want to get rid of your action cards late in the game, and you want to get rid of your number cards earlier in the game, but along with that, you want to get rid of your highest numbered cards first. You can play off of this, and you can also play with the statistic pillar by placing down that red too, but instead of placing down your highest red card, you place down your lowest red card. So really, you could have any number of red cards left, you're just playing with the enemy's brain. The only way that this works is if someone's looking for it, though. And that's the biggest part about Uno that I've learned. This is, this is what I've learned through all my, my, my days of research here. And this is the best advice that I can give you if you're playing Uno and you really want to win. And that's for you to know who's at that table with you. If you can psychoanalyze anyone at that table, you can win. I know you've seen Uno. I know you've seen the memes everywhere. That's not just a meme, dude. People get really emotional when they play Uno, and I don't really know why, but they do. Something about this card game taps deep into our inner psyche and brings out the most primal nature in all of us. It brings out the good and the evil in people. I got a text. Sorry. Okay. But a quick intermission here, I gotta explain something because a lot of people apparently don't know about this, the challenge rule in Uno. So a lot of people don't really know how this rule works. If you play it online, you'll see like a little box come up that asks if you want to challenge your player, or it's kind of hidden in the rules, and that's why not a lot of people know about it, because it's so, like, in there. Um, a lot of people just don't want to read. So here's how the challenge rule works, I'll explain it as best as I can. The wild plus four rule states that you can only place that card down when you don't have any cards of the color that is previously placed down. Let me explain through an example, okay. Some dude before me just placed down a blue five, and I'm like, okay, I want to play my wild plus four, but I can't because I have another blue card in my hand. I have to play the blue card down or that wild plus four is illegal. The trick is I can still play that wild plus four. It just means that someone can catch me with my pants down. The next dude who gets plus four can challenge that plus four 
and bring it back on me as a plus six, if they're right, about me having a blue card in my hand. But it only corresponds to the color, so if they place down a blue five and I had a red five, I can still place down the plus four and not get challenged for anything. That's the trick to Uno. You gotta know the two pillars. You gotta know statistics and you gotta know strategy. Your strategy obviously is to get rid of your highest cards first and keep those action cards until later in the game to spam everyone at the end of the game so that you can ensure your win. The other pillar, statistics, is also a huge component in Uno. You have to know that the game is luck based and you're not always going to get the best turn, but you can make the most of it by trying to count cards of other players. The third pillar is very important though, psychology. Everyone points towards poker as being a mind game because you can make someone fold with having such an awful hand. You think bots are less predictable than me? What am I about to do? I'm going all in. Huh? Halfway, uh... You got no idea. I'm in your mind, fool! I'm, I'm in your what? house! 12k, what I cre I've created a monster. I'm great at a monster. <laughs> but Uno is just as much of a mind game as poker. In fact, it can be even more so as it can be taken out of the game and totally into real life situations. If you play the custom Uno game where you write stuff on the card, you can ruin lives. You can legitimately like destroy marriages. I know it's kind of a cheap cop out to say, come up with strategies on your own instead of giving you more ideas, but I'll give you one more in case you don't have enough ideas, you don't really know. The game is a lot more flexible than you think. There's a there's a lot more nuance and complexity to Uno than you would imagine. So here's yeah here's a little bit of a tip. That plus four challenge rule I mentioned earlier. If you challenge someone who plus fours you, no matter if they're right or wrong, you have the right to look at their entire deck. So you can basically reveal someone's entire deck. And I mean you get punished with a plus four. But if you're pretty ahead in the game, that can be a big component of winning. Just be careful out there. It's a wild world.